Hi, my name is Wendy Davis and this is a version of a presentation that I first gave at the Alia Queensland Mini Conference that was held at the Brisbane Square Library on Friday, November the 15th, 2013. So the presentation is reflecting on the Musical Bundaberg project as it um, stands so far um, and the aspect of it that I was particularly looking at on that day was um, connecting the musical Bundaberg community with their cultural heritage. Um, so the key point is that at the moment musical Bundaberg is very much a work in progress uh, but it was really useful to have the opportunity of the Alia um, conference to reflect on how things had gone so far and to get some feedback and hints on how things um, might go differently or better in the future. So Musical Bundaberg uh, at the moment is a project that um, I think of as having two faces. So there's the official project um, which is a 24 credit point project that I will be completing for my Masters at QUT. Uh, but beyond that um, Musical Bundaberg is intended to be an ongoing project that I uh, want to ha have a life and an identity beyond the project that will be completed for the Masters. So while in one way it has to do certain things to meet particular criteria for the Masters project unit, Musical Bundaberg is also um, quite a personal project for me um, and has a scope that goes beyond the Masters study and it may even prove to look very different once that first part of the project is completed. So you can see there on the slide the summary of the approved project for QUT. So the key thing is that it's creating a digital archive um, and focusing on community music groups and for the first part of the project I'm looking at the Bundaberg Orpheus Singers Incorporated. Um, I have already undertaken and some interviews with past and present members of that group and I um, am well into digitising um, histor historical artefacts belonging to the organisation and its members and the next step is to actually build the archive or the library. So there's five key objectives um, that I'm aiming to achieve with this part of the project. Firstly, um, in its final form, I will have engaged with current literature and developments in the digital cultural heritage sector um, as a way of giving the project some context and background. Um, for me personally, I will have gained some practical skills in the curation and and preservation of a digital archive uh, through the use of open source software. Um, to develop some skills in producing digital stories. Um, I have experimented with this so far, um, but there's more work to do there. To engage with community music organisations and encourage their participation in the project and within the region that they're operating. Um, and the, the last objective is that the project will make a contribution to um, the growing activity in what I see are the connected disciplines of digital humanities, digital cultural heritage and digital archives and collections, particularly in a regional Queensland context. So up to this point, my focus has really been the fourth objective, which was the connection with the musical community. And there's two aspects to that um, idea of connection. That firstly, there's my connection with the community, and then there's the community's connection with their own heritage. And both those connections need to be fostered in different ways. I will say that at this point in the project, I did um, or I have underestimated the work and time involved in getting this to happen but of course without those connections occurring successfully nothing else can happen in terms of the project's progress. So some brief background to where this project came from. Um, in July 2012 at the Rails 8 conference um, I was presenting some um, work I'd done with Catherine Howard from QUT about the glam sector um, in Australia in terms of particularly um, the Commonwealth Cultural Policy that at that time was um, due to be released. Uh, but I was really inspired by a number of presentations there about cultural heritage and the connection there with the glam movement and principles. I also then started thinking about my participation in community music groups in Bundaberg and what seems to be 
an apparent lack of interest or even um, the capacity that um, they have that they would need to record and preserve their own cultural heritage. Um, so from my position as a resident of Bundaberg and as a community musician, having a background in cultural studies and then my current LIS study and interest in GLAM, I thought there was great potential and need for a project like Musical Bundaberg um, and I officially began the project in July 2013. Um, so for those of you who aren't aware, Bundaberg is a community, um, it's a regional city about 400 kilometres north of Brisbane. It's best known for um, perhaps rum. Also, it's a farming and agricultural community with a strong history in that respect. Um, and it's also a tourist de destination as well in regional Queensland. The population is about 100,000 people and that includes the city of Bundaberg itself as well as outlying areas and smaller smaller towns including Childers, Woodgate Beach, South Killan and Jinjin. So like most regional Queensland centres, um, Bundaberg has a history of musical activity but it hasn't been documented in any comprehensive way. This slide shows three images um, that I've found that indicate there has been a history of musical activity in the town. The one with the clock tower uh, is from the period 1900 to 1925 um, and that was found by a trove and belonged to the State Library of Victoria. Um, it's a picture of a marching band in the main street of Bundaberg. The one below that is from a similar time and that was found via the State Library of Queensland. Um, it's a picture of an Estedford choir, um, obviously very early in the 20th century or perhaps even before that. Um, the third bigger image is from the early 1970s and that was provided to me by a current choir member of the Bundaberg Orpheus Singers uh, and that group was established in the mid-1960s after the folding of two other choirs, the Bundaberg Musical Society and the Bundaberg Men's Choir. Currently the Bundaberg Orpheus Singers has a core membership of probably between 40 and 50 singers. They rehearse weekly and they perform three to four concerts a year in Bundaberg um, and they their repertoire is a mixture of classical choral um, works as well as more popular pieces and they often collaborate with other groups in the city. Um, these groups are of interest to me but they're beyond the radar of the scope of my um, master's project. So at the top is an image of the Bundaberg Symphony Orchestra which is an adult orchestra in the town. Next there is the Bundaberg Youth Orchestra which recently celebrated 40 years of activity in Bundaberg and below that is the Bundaberg Municipal Band um, and like many regional centres Bundaberg has a strong history um, and a long history of um, brass bands in the community. So we'll get to the uh, reality of implementing and beginning the project so far. Um, before this project began, my connection to the Orpheus Singers was as their accompanist for the last seven years, which is a voluntary role. Um, so to undertake the musical Bro Bundaberg project, my connection to the group had to change quite significantly in many ways. Um, and in making that connection with the community of the choir, I found myself thinking about the relationship between me as the researcher and the group. So not being trained as an oral historian, as I um, undertook some interviews and then listened back to the recordings of them, I started to have some concerns because what I felt I was hearing was not an interview. Um, instead it was more like a discussion or a conversation between two people who were both really interested in talking about the same topic. Um, but my concerns were about my objectivity, why I was engaging in this discussion, why was I not being a, a passive observer, why did it sound like we were sharing thoughts and ideas and trading memories and to me I became concerned that I was doing this, um, these interviews quite incorrectly. But I thought about it again and I also talked with a critical friend who is an oral historian and she gave me a name for my role in these interviews and that is of the insider. Um, and she too is an insider in her research and that can be uh, quite an advantage 
um, because what I wanted to do was draw out and preserve the individual stories of my interviewees and to do this they had to feel comfortable talking with me and I realized that because I'm part of the group I'm in quite a good place to be able to make that happen um, so part of uh, the delight in my conversations with these participate participants has been in having these um, the assumptions I might have approached the interviews with challenged and sometimes even rejected and I think if I wasn't wasn't an insider then perhaps my uh, interviewees might not have been quite so frank and open with me so the other challenge in terms of connection in this project is been, has been connecting the community of the choir with their cultural heritage. Um, so because the project is a digital cultural heritage project it seemed clear to me that I would use the tools at my disposal um, both to preserve material as well as to help the community connect with it. But one thing I hadn't really thought about was the intensity of um, some members of the community's views towards social media and Facebook was a prime example of that. So one of the first things I did um, this year was set up a Facebook page for the Orpheus Singers uh, and this had very varying reactions. There was delight from some members of the group who were the Facebook users, um, ambivalence from others and a fair amount of negativity from some people and that really emphasized to me that not everyone is as enthusiastic about social media and other digital platforms um, as I might be or as our profession might be so I quickly learned to tread very carefully and do a lot of explaining um, before um, using Facebook much further. However the formal part of the project has a website that I've set up using WordPress and this allows me space to write a reflective blog monitoring the project's progress and it also is a space where I can make available snippets of the interviews that I'm storing with SoundCloud and this part of the project has ethical clearance and I've been extremely careful to explain what, what my interviews are signing with their consent forms um, and I think having the website means that we have the scope here to expand beyond the Orpheus Singers to other groups. I also use a dedicated Facebook page and Twitter account for Musical Bundaberg to distribute new content from the website as I add it. At the moment these don't have high traffic and I need to devote more time to them and use them more effectively. Not just in terms of the choir's connection to its cultural heritage but also to the wider community of Bundaberg and beyond. So in terms of connecting with a commu the community, another thing I found fascinating was that in undertaking interviews with choir members, they were often quite dismissive of, their, of the value of their own experiences in being part of the group. So you can see there, these were some of the, the reactions that I got as I um, gently approached people to see if they would talk with me. They didn't think that they'd have anything to say. Um, often once they listened back to their interview which I provided them a, um, a copy of. They were concerned that they'd been too opinionated and definitely that wasn't the case. They couldn't believe that I'd want to talk to them for more than say 10 to 15 minutes that there would be that much to say but we quickly found that there was indeed um, an hour's worth of conversation if not more. And the first person I approached wondered if I'd asked, asked her um, to talk to me just because she was old and she'd have a lot to remember. Um, but that, doesn't, that wasn't the case at all. So, so far I've completed eight hour long interviews with past and present members and I have a list of others that I want to undertake. Whether that happens within the scope of the Masters project or after that um, is yet to be decided. So as I talked with them there were five basic discussion points that I structured the interviews around but from those five key points other, other issues and topics of conversation quickly sprang up and made for interesting, um, interesting information. So I asked them, started by asking um, each interviewee, interviewee about their history with the choir, so how long they'd belonged to the group, um, what kind of roles they'd taken on within the organisation and everyone had lots to say about that and often here we got into discussions about their previous musical experience whether it was um, from childhood or from other adult choirs that they'd been in. 
I was also really keen to know why they decided to join the choir and there was lots of different reasons for that. Some of it was to do with moving to Bundaberg and looking for um, a social outlet, a place to meet new people. Um, up for others it was just for um, the fact that they liked to sing in a choir and there was a choir in town so that's where they went. I was also keen to know if people had thought about what the benefits for them were in being a member of the Bundaberg Orpheus Singers and there was lots of um, varying responses here. Um, a key one was about um, how being in the choir had expanded their musical knowledge and their knowledge of choral repertoire and how they'd sung um, pieces that they may never encountered before or that they never thought they would ever sing. Um, strangely or perhaps not strangely a recurring theme here is the Requiem by Gabriel Fauré which the choir has performed twice and seemed to really um, resonate with a number of the people that I spoke with. Um, other people talked about exciting experiences that they'd had in terms of workshops with um, professionals who'd come to town to work with us um, and I had expected that one of the key things was would be about um, meeting new people and perhaps making friends and while a couple of people mentioned this um, not, most people saw it as a social outlet but not a place where they went to sort of make their best friends or their their um, group of friends that they spend most of their time with um, it's really about the singing uh, I also asked them if they'd been involved in other community arts or music groups and how those experience might how those experiences might be different or similar to the Orpheus experience and here we talked about often um, our rehearsals, the types of concerts that we put on, but the biggest talking point of all was about um, the uniform, particularly for the women that I talked to, and it seems that choir uniforms are a key topic of conversation. Um, there is a uniform in the choir's history that's sort of affectionately referred to as the maternity dress and I don't think that we will ever see it um, see the light of day again um, and it was even mentioned by one interviewee as the reason why she didn't join the choir sooner be, um, because she didn't like what they were wearing and couldn't see herself wearing that. So that was um, something that I hadn't really thought about talking with people about but quickly became something that I wanted to ask everyone I spoke to um, about with their views on that. Um, th for me going into the interviews I really wanted to know what people thought that the choir contributed to the community of Bundaberg and I thought um, that they would have a lot to say about that however that proved not to be the case most of the time this question was met with a surprised silence or a blank look um, and for the bulk of the interviewees so far it's very simple they go to choir because they love to sing not for any other altruistic reason in terms of community spirit that's very much a secondary or even further down the list concern. So there's been some challenges for me. One, one is about time. As I mentioned earlier, I've underestimated the time it would take me to um, digitise nearly 30 years of concert programs and other documents. Um, but I am very lucky to have access to these. Um, many other things um, have been lost over the years that people had kept. Um, it's an isolated task and at the moment I don't have a connection um, with an institution um, or repository that's formal in this way so there are some concerns for me about the legitimacy of the project but in another way this isolation is an advantage for me in the long term um, because it forces me to learn everything about a project like this rather than just be one part um, of a group working on this issue. Um, and the other thing is that I have had to be very diplomatic um, in working with the community organisation. Um, some people um, have very definite views about um, 
what it is about the choir that should be made public um, and so I've had to really respect the views of the people who I'm asking to collaborate and connect with me. There's been lots of rewards so far though. Um, there's been a lot of laughter between me and the interviewees and I realised very quickly that I was thoroughly enjoying myself in talking to these fascinating people and listening to their stories. The second reward for me was that in a number of the interviews um, I was very fortunate in that people felt comfortable enough to talk with me about how singing and choral music had actually significantly, significantly changed their lives over quite a long period of time. Um, sometimes this was in terms of changed careers uh, as a result of um, engaging with music um, or helping them through difficult times in their lives. Um, thirdly, it was really nice to make a different connection with the um, singers in the choir um, and they shared a number of sort of special but everyday moments with me that I wouldn't have um, found out about or been um, or shared with them if I was still being the accompanist. Um, it was good to hear a number of people tell me that they'd actually enjoyed the interview experience, that it wasn't scary and that they'd thought about lots of other things they wished they'd told me after we were finished. And I found it really inspiring to listen to these stories and realise that everybody does have a story. And what I really found and have found so far is that I'm really passionate about recording um, the history and the heritage and the memories of people involved in this group. So in terms of what's next, um, the digitisation needs to be finished and I'm close to doing that and I would, would like to do a couple more interviews um, for the Masters part of this project. Um, the literature review needs to be engaged with and I really want to work with the community of the choir to be able to show them what they have in terms of a, um, a, an important history and contribution to the cultural heritage of the region and I really want to look for more opportunities to collaborate and disseminate the outcomes of this project.